Speaker Francisco Gil Bea from Biodonostia Research Institute. And he's going to talk about alterations of a lipid metabolism defining a potential circulating biomarkers of uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for having us. I'm so delighted to be here and present this work and try to and have the opportunity to, to try to persuade you about uh, the potential value that blood lipids can have in the prognosis of this neurodegenerative disorder. Um, as Carmen has just mentioned, uh, ALS is a disease that affects motor neurons and this causes a progressive and very rapid muscle atrophy until paralysis and death uh, in an average time of two years or three years. Uh, and for, for which current treatments has little or no effect. But above it, and as uh, on Wednesday, Dr. Adriano Kio explained very well, this disease is very, is hugely heter heterogeneous. It has a very uh, het heterogeneity in terms of the clinical phenotypes, the different clinical <coughs> phenotypes, and as well in the different uh, rate of progression of the disease as exemplified in this, in this figure. Um, of course, it is, uh, there is a very urgent need to find treatments for, to cure this disease, as uh, Carmen and we and others here are doing, but not less urgent is to find biomarkers of disease. In this disease, to, f to have biomarkers of early diagnosis is very important because uh, this disorder progresses very rapidly and because it might take up to one year to diagnose one patient. So that will be very uh, helpful for neurologists to neurologist take decisions and even for patients to make their, uh, the best for the remaining time. And of course, we need prognostic factors um, to, to categorize patients and also to reduce the heterogeneity in clinical trials. And as well, we need uh, indicators of uh, treatment efficacy in clinical trials. And that will help drug discovery programs and will help as well uh, precision medicine. Um, if I tell you that in the last decade, the number of studies utilizing omic technologies for biomarker discovery has grown, that's nothing new. But if I tell you that in 2018, the number of metabolomic studies has caught up with transcriptomic ones, that's perhaps more surprising. And this is particularly surprising in the field of neurological disorders, where the increase in the metabolomic studies for biomarker discovery has grown like double in the last two years, with special attention in, in the studies where they were analyzing lipid, uh, lipidome. And this is because disturbances in lipid metabolism are being recognized to occur in conditions that are not only directly linked to lipid metabolism. And in the case of, sorry, in the case of ALS, there is growing evidence supporting that lipid metabolism do have an important role in the disease. For example, several works have reported that uh, a big proportion of patients have increased energy expenditure, which leads to reduced fat stores, and that correlate, correlates with disease. Also, other studies have reported ele elevated triglyceride levels correlated with increased life expect expectancy of patients, and that type 2 diabetes, a disease that is related to lipid metabolism, of course, is associated with a decreased risk of ALS. Animal studies has recapulate, recapulated these lipid um, disturbances, and they have also postulated that a switch towards uh, lipid use by muscle cells may precede motor neuron degeneration. So overall, um, lipid metabolism and nutritional status in ALS patients is likely to be a prognos prognosis fac factor for the disease. So in previous studies, the reported lipidomic profiling in blood, in blood of ALS patient was incomplete or lacked the associations with clinical variables. That's why we, we, we think to do a, a comprehensive lipidomic profiling in accord of 20 ALS patients and 20 healthy controls that fulfill the following criteria. They were matched for dietary habits, 
They have the same meal before sample collection. They were fasting and blood collection was done uh, at the same time point and processed by, uh, uniformly by the biobank. And this is particularly, particularly important to minimize the factors that most affect or influence the lipidomic profiling in blood. The lipidomic analysis was performed by Old Metabolomics, a pioneer uh, company in this field, uh, which utilizes uh, several platforms optimized to, uh, to give a broad coverage of the, of the lipidome. For example, they are able to identify more than 1,000 lipid uh, features following um, strict quality controls and data analysis. So in our samples, we found uh, more, a little bit more than 400 lipid features in serum of, a, a, of controls and ALS patients. Instead, we didn't find any lipid uh, signature that was able to separate ALS and control groups. When we did an OPLS model, we found that lipid families responsible for the small differences were mainly triglycerides, bile acid, cerebrocytes, and sphingomyelins. Uh, that they were all increased in ALS patients. We believe that increases in uh, cerebrocytes and sphingomyelins, which are very rich in nerve tissues, could be re uh, reflecting just neuronal damage. Well, the univariate analysis told us that there were 30 lipid metabolites that were significantly changed in patients of ALS, 20, 20, 22 up and 8 down. I show you this table uh, depicting the major, the, major uh, the lipid changes that we have found according to the lipid family that they belong. I'm not going into detail because there is no time, but I just want to show you that there is no uh, particular lipid family affected in ALS. Instead, what we found is that the acyl chains that compose the, li the different lipid and molecules were speci specifically affected. And the overall effect was that very long chain uh, fatty acids, more than 18 carbons, were overrepresented among the increased lipid metabolites found in ALS patients, while fatty acids with less than 18 carbons, specifically 14 and 16, appear in rich among the decreased lipid metabolites. Uh, so it does so, I mean, in the, if the, if the um, lipid differences that we observe are due to the difference in the fatty acid that compose the, the lipid metabolites, we wanted to uh, study the, the relative distribution, the, the relative abundance of fatty acids in serum of, uh, of patients. And for that, we, we use a bigger cohort following the same criteria. And this time, we use gas chromatography with flange ionization. Well, I show you this illustration uh, representing the biosynthetic pathways of fatty acids just to depict the major changes that we found in this study in, in relation to fatty acids. According to the previous study, we found that very long chain fatty acids were increased, and these increases were due to increases in omega-9 fatty acids, at least some of them, and omega-3 fatty acids but omega-6 fatty acids were decreased instead. And also fatty acids with less than 18 carbons, in particular this one which is called palmitoleic acid, was decreased. So next, we wanted to know if any of these lipid or fatty acid changes were associated to survival of disease progression. Uh, surprisingly, we did not find uh, any correlation between the very long chain fatty acids which were the more consistent affected, and survival. Instead, we found that palmitoleic acid, this 16-carbon uh, uh, fatty acid, were strongly correlated with survival. We wanted to know if any of these uh, fatty acids were correlated to disease progression. We used two outcomes of uh, developmental staging of disease, which is time to gastro gastrostomy feeding and time to mechanical ventilation. And we again found that palmitoleic acid, which is here, yeah, was correlated to time to gastrostomy. And in the case of non-mechanical ventilation, the, the two uh, fatty acids that correlated to these outcomes were this and this, which this is 14 carbons, which is called myristic acid. 
Well, after trying different combinations of, 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 of fatty acid, we ended up with one biomarker formed by the combination of myristic acid and palmitoleic acid, which was uh, able to correlate with both decreased survival and faster disease progression in terms of uh, decreased time to gastrostomy and mechanical ventilation. Well, uh, to summarize this study, uh, this study failed to find a lipase signature in, in serum that clearly separates ALS and control groups. However, there were a particular trend toward higher levels of omega-9 and omega-3 fatty acids, but not omega-6 that were decreased. Also, uh, fatty acids with less than 18 carbons were decreased. But the most strangly, striking result is that a lipid biomarker formed by the combination of myristic acid and palmitoleic acid was an independent predictor of survival and disease progression of ALS. I want to thank the lab, collaborators, and funding. Thank you very much. So very quickly, very interesting. Um, there was a paper that was published at the beginning of this year in, for Alzheimer's disease in PLOS Medicine. Mm -hmm. showing that uh, sphingolipids and uh, glycerospingolipids are also involved in the progression of the disease and could be biomarkers or of um, broad, broad biomarkers. So my, my quick question is whether you think that these sphingolipids could also be involved. Maybe, maybe some of these fatty acids are part of the sphingolipids or... <clears throat> Well, it could be like the, uh, the very long chain fatty acids are very rich in uh, sphingolipids and sphingomyelin, uh, the family of lipids. So it could be, I mean, it could be that uh, at least the long chain, very, uh, f uh, very long chain fatty acid could be the, those in the sphingolipids that were correlated with uh, uh, Alzheimer's progression. But in, in our case, we didn't find any correlation of any of these very long chain fatty acids. We, we, we think that perhaps these changes are related or are secondary to pathology or as they are um, their precursors, precursors of omega-3 omega and omega-6 fatty acids are essential. They come from the diet, so perhaps um, um, if the disease has a metabolic uh, future, perhaps there is a an adaptation or, or, or a tendency for patients to eat those uh, meals that provide them uh, the, the, the more accurate, more uh, necessary uh, food for them. We move quickly to the next speaker, I'm sorry. <laughs>